So Dr. Schultz, today we're answering questions from our comment section here on our YouTube channel. And our first question is, can somebody get, um, you know, space or, which is a gel to separate the prostate and the rectal wall to protect people from radiation burns. Can you get that if you're going to have salvage radiation? Salvage radiation, um, most people think of it in the context of men that have had previous surgery. And it's a very natural thing to consider in that setting. And it can be very effective. In that setting, the answer is no, uh, because really what you're doing is separating the rectal wall and the prostate, just as you said. And in the post-surgical uh, setting, there is no prostate to separate. In fact, you want to cover the rectal wall. So the answer is no for people that have had previous surgery. But what about people that are doing salvage radiation that are having a local recurrence after radiation and they still have a prostate? The answer in that setting is sometimes. There's no doubt an advantage to pushing the rectal wall out of the radiation field with that gel, as you talked about. Uh, the only questions would be, is, uh, there, is the cancer, the recurrent cancer, so close to the, to the back of the prostate, which is right next to the rectal wall, uh, that the um, injection of the gel could actually cause some of the cancer to be pushed out of the radiation field. Another issue that would also arise is that in a previously radiated prostate, presumably without space or the first time, that the rectal wall has had some previous radiation. And if there's some scar tissue uh, in that area, when the gel is injected, it may not distribute smoothly as it is in an unradiated situation. So the answer is yes, the space or could be a consideration for salvage radiation after radiation, not for salvage radiation after surgery, um, and that when it's used for salvage radiation after radiation, it would have to be on a selective basis. So we've heard a lot of conversations, you know, with lutetium-177, and I think that people want to know if they can take lutetium-177 if they've already had spot radiation. So spot radiation for what we call oligometastatic cancer is becoming far more popular than it used to be, and I think with good reason. Spot radiation that's being given these days is, uh, in ex expert hands, very safe. There isn't much downside, and there's certainly a potential upside. So is there a problem giving lutetium after spot radiation? I really don't see any reason it should be a problem at all. The use of lutetium, which as we all know is just getting started up, uh, is, um, it's very much in its baby stages. It's presently approved for people with advanced prostate cancer uh, who have had previous chemotherapy and have progressive disease. Um, whether people have had spot radiation or not, I don't think is going to be a material concern. The only issue that could come up is if people have compromised bone marrow reserve. So uh, lutetium is a form of radiation, and in theory, there could be problems with reduced blood counts, uh, anemia, low white count, low platelet count. Uh, in people that have had a lot of previous spot radiation, uh, you sometimes will see that manifestation. Then you'll, you'll wonder if adding further lutetium is going to create even more problems with low blood counts. Uh, my experience with lutetium is that is not a prominent concern. It is a possible concern, but it's not a prominent concern. So I don't think the spot radiation is really going to impact the use or not use of lutetium in any way whatsoever. So we have a patient, and I'll explain the situation. Basically, they've had a biopsy, their report came back that they have a lot of 3 plus 3, but there is some 3 plus 4, and then on the report it said cribiform. And so they want to know, hey, I had 3 plus 3, there was some 3, three plus 4, I'm considering active surveillance even in the intermediate space. What is cribiform, first of all? So cribiform seems to be a softly an indication uh, that there's a slightly higher risk of metastasis. When you look at um, Gleason score, it's really been the go-to methodology for determining the risk of metastasis, which is a driving issue in the whole field of cancer. The um, reason that it's a driving issue is that with other types of cancers, it's assumed that uh, metastasis are going to occur if you don't do something to get the primary out immediately. That's not necessarily the truth with prostate cancer. We know that many forms will never spread. So we're always trying to figure out which types spread and which types don't spread. And the main driving factor for making that determination has been the Gleason score. So 3 plus 3s don't spread. 3 plus 4s have a low risk of spread. 4 plus 4s a little higher. 4 plus 5s even higher. Not all 4 plus 4s and 4 plus 5s spread, but there's a higher risk of spread. 
So if we look at three plus four, it's actually a very broad spectrum of stuff. People that have a little bit of four and people that have a lot of four, up to 50% four, are all called three plus four. And it's in this range where people start talking about the risk of metastasis being excessive and therefore precluding the ability to do active surveillance. So if you have a lot of four, three plus four with say 40% grade four, plus cribiform, then you're looking at an even higher risk of metastasis and people become more discouraged about the possibility of doing active surveillance. The problem with this whole area is it's a big gray zone and people who want to do active surveillance have to consider other factors as well, not only the risk of metastasis, but uh, maybe whether metastasis have already occurred by getting a PSMA PET scan, by looking at uh, how safe the treatment can be. Can they have focal therapy, which doesn't have a great, very great chance of erectile dysfunction? So they could do treatment in someone that has a low risk of metastasis just to be safe. And then, of course, there's the age factor. We know that people are going to survive 20 years, even if they do metastasize with modern prostate cancer, because we're catching it very early and treatments are very effective. So age, cribiform, the amount of grade four, the, the, the danger of treatment, how, how bad is it really, can you do focal or not. Uh, all these factors are going to be part of the, the, uh, the paradigm for deciding if you can safely do active surveillance. Cribiform, therefore, is relevant, but maybe a relatively small part of the equation. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like more information about prostate cancer and all sorts of education, you can visit our website, pcri.org, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer education videos every week.